Excuse me, miss. That is my chair. Well, hello. If you're anything like me, you like nice things. Shiny things, in fact. But if you're also like me, you probably have a very limited budget. Then again, who isn't in 2024? Seems like shrinkflation is affecting everyone. Some of us have even been priced out of Taco Bell. Because of that, I'm sure things like Renaissance fairs seem like luxuries. However, like I said, we like nice things. We like shiny things. And we like where shiny things are. So the question is, can you go to a Ren fair and dress up and still be on a budget? If you're not new to my channel, you've probably seen my other videos on the subject. I have done two parts of this specific topic mostly centered around thrifting for Ren fairs and how to zhuzh things up in order to make them pass off as Ren fair garb. I also have a TikTok compila comp compilation video, there you go, where I put together a bunch of videos where I've covered the subject on TikTok. They are a bit old, so if I manage to cover the same stuff in my next few videos, it's just an update, guys. I mean, that's what you do on the internet. Anyway, you repeat yourself. So I'm not new to the subject. When it comes to balling on a budget for Ren fairs, um, that is my forte. And I also tend to appeal to the noobs because even though I've been going for quite a few years, I still consider myself a noob because I've never really had access to really professional Ren fair garb, especially the pieces that are considered period accurate. I mean, what even is that anymore when it comes to Ren fairs because everyone just tends to dress whatever whimsy fantasy way that they like even if it's just loosely cottage core or their D&D character some people don't like that but i think it makes dressing up for ren fairs a lot more approachable and allows you to use your creativity a bit more than just is this historically accurate so this specific video is going to tackle how to source pieces for your renaissance fair outfit but not at the thrift store because i know that not everyone has access to thrift stores or maybe their thrift stores are garbage so when it comes to sourcing any kind of garb or accessory for the Renaissance Fair, budget is kind of a spectrum. It can range from very, very cheap to, holy God, this is expensive. I need to take out a second mortgage. So in this video, I'm going to be providing a range of price points with cheapest starting first, and we're going to move our way up to less cheap. And keep in mind, the cheaper you go, the lower in quality the item is. And typically the lower cost items are either fast fashion or mass produced in China. So they're not gonna last as long, but you can get them in a pinch, you can get them quick. Keep that in mind. I think that finding a good middle ground and investing in a better quality piece is going to be better for your wallet because even if you buy something super duper cheap but it breaks down the first time you wear it and then you have to rebuy something and then rebuy something, it's better to spend a little bit extra and get a piece that you can wear more than once because the more you wear something, the less cost per wear, if that makes sense. The first place that we're gonna look is fast fashion. And obviously there is a broad spectrum of opinions when it comes to the ethics of fast fashion, starting from like where they source their clothes, who's making them, how much they're being paid, what conditions they're working in, as well as where the designs came from because a lot of fast fashion places tend to rip off artists and smaller businesses. But in this video, since a lot of us are low income, we're not rolling in dough, we're not going to purchase shame in this video or in our comment section. We're going to use a little bit of nuance and realize that anyone who is purchasing things for special occasions aren't dropping hundreds of dollars at these places. Most of us have the goal of being able to shop sustainably and shop from small businesses. We just can't. So first of all, with the rise in popularity of cottage core, fairy core, and even fantasy styles and medieval styles and Lord of the Rings because of TikTok, a lot of larger brands and fast fashion brands have started to kind of emulate the styles that can be used as the base of a Ren Fair outfit. So a lot of pieces that I've been seeing lately are a lot of these peasant style dresses and tops that can be worn off the shoulder or on. They have like that square neck roughly or maybe they're like that round neck and gathered so you're going to be seeing a lot of those pieces especially like at forever 21. cider is a big one they have a lot of cupped styles a lot of faux 
corset styles. In fact, they have a lot of faux corsets and bodices in general, and they are pretty low cost. They also have a lot of these style dresses, the smocked dresses with the like poofy sleeves. I haven't seen a lot of them lately, but they have had them. Other places that have been kind of picking up on this trend is I've seen some stuff on Boohoo, Fashion Nova. A lot of times you can get away with a lot of different styles as long as you put a bodice on it. Put a bird on it! It's gonna do the job. So that style has been very popular as well as the maxi tiered skirt. Now, when you're shopping at fast fashion, it is possible to find cotton garments. There are fewer and far, fewer and farther in between. Yeah, that's that's how you say it. A lot of times you're gonna see polyester, which I do not recommend wearing to a Ren Faire, especially if it's hot. However, you can also get away with wearing rayon, I believe, and there's a few other synthetic fabrics that are typically sold at fast fashion that are more breathable. Another thing about these brands is they're a bit more accessible for various body types as well. It can be harder to find cute things for bigger body people. Places like Cider, I think Forever 21, I'm not sure, but Fashion Nova, they have plus sizes available. Most of the time they only go up to 4X and I find that these brands run a bit smaller, but the option is at least there. And that is another thing that is a concern for a lot of people that are trying to dress for Ren Fairs is that it can be a bit easier for straight size people to find cute things. Now, in my research, I did find this website, Bloom Chic. I've never heard of it, so I can't really attest to its quality. However, they did have a lot of really cute cottage core dresses and they go up to a size 6X. So if you're familiar with this brand and know if it's a good place to shop, let us all know in the comments. So that is another advantage of fast fashion. Even with all the other concerns that people might have, they do have to think about the inclusivity of it and the accessibility. Even places like Walmart, Target, and Old Navy have also emulated that cottage core style that is a great base for Ren Faire garb. I found that in the last few years, these places aren't as affordable. However, especially Target, in my experience, have a pretty big clearance section and Old Navy tends to have sales all the time, like BOGO sales. Another avenue too, if you have Ross, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, I uh, can't think of another example, but Oh, Burlington is another one, Burlington Coat Factory. These are discount stores that also sometimes have this like smocked, ruffly, off the shoulder, puffy sleeve style top or peasant style top or dress or ruffled skirt. So those are also places to check out that have pretty decent prices. And the items from all these places that I just talked about are pretty easily modified and styled in one way or another to make them look more fantasy. So the next place is pretty obvious and that is Amazon. Not that we want to pad the pockets of Jeffrey Bezos. I'm sure he's just itching to get back into space. Amazon is accessible for people, especially if you're disabled. That prime shipping man. They have pretty decent return policy. And also there are a lot of options. The quality is also questionable, but sometimes you can find some really good items. You just gotta read the reviews, look at the pictures of customers and look at the size recommendations in the reviews. And if you're looking for specific pieces to source on Amazon, I actually have an Amazon storefront. Gotta make some money somehow. So I will link my storefront down in the description. I have quite a few idealists, both for masculine and feminine Renaissance fair garb. I will always advocate for the small businesses first, but times are tough, do what you gotta do. In fact, this dress is actually from Amazon. I have quite a few colors. This is the Amazon viral dress. So the next place that I wanted to shout out, I'm actually gonna be working with pretty soon. They're sending me a few items. They just haven't come in the mail yet, but I will update you guys once they do come. And my brother has also bought a few pieces from this place as well, and he likes the pieces that he got, and that is Medieval Collectibles. Obviously, there's quite a few pieces on this website that are not affordable. I would say that this place is kind of a one-stop shop for Renfair garb. I would say they have a pretty large range of price points when it comes to Renfair garb, very affordable down to bougie as heck. So I would definitely recommend checking that out. I can't really speak to the shipping time because I haven't personally purchased anything off there. I'll have to ask my brother. And I haven't talked a lot about men's Renfair garb, mostly because I don't have a lot of experience with it. My husband just tends to wear the same outfits every year. I need to look more into it, but they have both men and women. And I believe they also have children, Ren Faire garb options as well. They have pretty much everything. They even have props and all of that stuff. So it's definitely worth going through and seeing what they have at different budgets. 
because I really think that they kind of have everything covered. Another thing that I want to mention is a little bit different. I haven't heard a lot of people talk about this. I've mentioned it before. But when it comes to finding clothes that fit, yes, people with bigger bodies struggle, but also people that are on the opposite end of the spectrum that are really teeny tiny, people that are particularly petite also sometimes struggle to find things that fit. Yes, they can tailor things, but not everyone is skilled with the sewing machine and not everyone can afford a tailor. So one option for those that are hobbit sized is that you can actually shop the kids section at the Renaissance Fair itself. And I find that it is more affordable than shopping for extra, extra small in the adult section. In fact, you don't have to be that teeny tiny to get to buy something from the children's section. I actually have a bodice that I purchased from the Colorado Renaissance Fair and I sized up to a large and it fits me quite well. And the cool thing about this is that not only was it $60 instead of over $100, it's technically not designed to be reversible, but the inside is finished and it looks good inside out. So it's a two for one. That's going to come up again. I would just say that if you are tall, this may not be a feasible hack for you because th the items are designed for a child. So if you're too tall, it might be a little short on you. Um, I am 5'4 and even I think my bodice is a little bit short. But I just wanted to mention this because even some vendors have been like, yeah, definitely recommend this for people. So I would say that even if you're up to a straight size US six or a medium women's, you might be able to get away with buying kids clothes in a larger size, just saying. And then the next store I wanna mention, it will be relevant to the DIY side in a moment, which you'll see why. But I also wanted to mention Costa Real Real, and I know I'm saying it wrong, I sound stupid, but that's all I know how to say it because I can't pronounce it correctly. But they have some really nice, whimsical fantasy items. They are a little bit more pricey because they are a small business and they hand make everything, but I think you get what you pay for. And when it comes to their bodices, they are extremely comfortable. They are not boned. So you're gonna be able to wear it all day at the fair and be very comfy. It's also more of a vest corset style. So I feel like it's a bit more versatile. So if you're going for more of a peasant look, a hobbit look, pirate, depending on the print you get, if you're going for more feminine or masculine, I feel like they work. And this is where the unintentional reversible corset thing comes into play because I discovered that since they are very well made and the inside is finished, if I remove the tags on the inside, I can technically turn it inside out and then I get a two for one. I tested it out with the few of mine and um, it looks pretty good. So they are like a hundred bucks, but I feel like it's worth it. You're gonna get multiple wears out of them, which again plays into the reusability, less money per wear, if you get my drift. If you have to spend a little bit more, at least spend it on something that you're gonna love, that you're gonna be comfortable in, and that you're gonna wear over and over again. And I think that Costa Real Real is definitely one of those places, especially their bodices. Now, they do have a lot of accessories. I feel like they're pretty decently priced as well, but if that's a bit too expensive for you, we can go into the DIY section. I can't go too in depth. Maybe I will plan some more fantasy DIY videos in the future, but if you get creative, you could come up with some ideas on how to make belt bags. I've made skirt hikes from belts before. Yes, the initial kit to add the studding and the, like the bolt, what do you call those? The snappy bits, the metal components, it is a bit of an investment. Um, so I would only recommend getting into that if you're planning on making multiple pieces, like maybe you're making skirt hikes for your whole gang. You're also maybe making tankard straps and you can use like an old belt. Specifically, I would go for a leather belt, which you could usually thrift pretty cheaply. Now I did say this isn't a thrifting video. So sometimes you can even get good cheap belts at like Walmart, Target, but don't quote me on that. It used to be cheap. If you make enough of them, the cost per one is pretty low. So if you go in with some people on a kit to make your own skirt hikes and tankard straps and maybe sheaths with some old belts that you sourced from a cheap source, I say it's worth it, man. I did it. I like it. And speaking of Costa Real Real and speaking of DIY, forever ago they sent me this book, which is a handmade Renaissance Fair fashion book. And what this has is some guides on how they make some of their most popular pieces. So for example, 
They have some leather working guides and so they show how they make one of their leaf masks. They also have a guide on how they make their chemise as well as their Renaissance bodice. So if you can't afford to buy one of their bodices, you could try to make one. They have guides on their hairpins and their flower crowns as well as their capelet, their medieval linen shirt, their velvet royal dress, which I have one of these in like a cream white color. And then there's the hooded long cloak as well. And in addition to the actual guides, they have patterns as well to go along with the tutorials so that you're not just uh, guesstimating, you actually have some patterns to work off of as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and link this book down in the description if it's still available. I know not everyone is super skilled with the sewing machine, but it's definitely something to look into. I'm trying to look into it. I am intimidated, but I'm I'm giving it a shot, guys. I actually have quite a few projects that I have under under wrap, well, under not under my belt, under wraps. I'm I'm working on some stuff right now, which you guys will see in the coming months. So speaking of sewing and modifying items, I have sourced quite a few items in the last few months for some specific designs, some specific costumes that I have designed myself that I would like to make. And I'm starting off by actually trying to thrift flip some things. So that is something that I'm gonna be documenting the process of over the next few months. I'm making two outfits for the Colorado Ren Fair, which I'm going to again, which I'm so excited. I am going to take my time to do these projects and document as I go. This is actually gonna be how I'm gonna be doing videos from henceforth, which I'll talk about a little bit more in a future video. I'm going to start the project and then work on it incrementally and I'm gonna be doing several of these videos and projects at the same time, which will be really hard to coordinate, but I feel like it's gonna be a lot easier for me to put the effort and time both into the project and the filming and the editing. But again, I'll cover that a lot later, but I'm really excited for these costumes because I'm making some things from scratch and then I'm thrift flipping some things. That's all I'm gonna say there, no spoilers. Spoilers. So. I have a lot more to say about how to source things for cheap, but this video is getting long, so I'm going to end it there and we're gonna be doing a part two next week. Now, even though not everyone has access to thrift stores in their area, it is possible to find Ren Faire garb secondhand. So in next week's video in part two, I'm gonna be talking about ways that you can source things secondhand online for Ren Fairs. I did recently make a video exactly like this for how to thrift things in your style online through various secondhand websites. So you can refer to that video in the meantime, but next week I'm gonna be talking specifically more about Ren Fair garb and I'm gonna be taking you guys through the process. Maybe we'll even shop together. So online thrift with me, whether I place an order or not. And I know I've also covered all of those points in my past videos about thrifting for Ren Fair, but again, it's an update. I've evolved in my means of searching and and you know, every year we pick up new skills and tips and tricks. So even if I tread on old ground and I cover old tips, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Anyways, if you guys have any tips and tricks yourself about where to get stuff for cheap, if you've seen any websites or businesses that have fair prices where people can find Ren Fair garb or pieces that work in a fantasy medieval inspired outfit, let us all know down in the description, description, down in the comments, Let's share. We do not gatekeep on this channel. We share the knowledge, we share the love, and I will definitely appreciate if you guys have anything that I haven't found either because I like to find some new places to shop too and some new businesses to support. And there's quite a few other places anyway that I wasn't able to mention because this video is getting freaking long. So I gotta wrap it up. Poppy already passed out asleep. It's late at night right now. And she's like, mother, I need to go to bed. It past your bedtime is oh sorry I woke you up all right so I hope this was helpful and if it was make sure you like this video make sure you subscribe and even if you don't have anything to contribute to the conversation still comment but down blah, 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 blah. still comment down below listen it's late I'm tired oh big stretch you guys missed it it was a stretch it's so cute where was I cute dog still comment down below um Comment about Poppy, how cute she is or something. I don't care. I, I care about her. Okay. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. I will see you next week with part two and where we talk, where we do some online shopping together and I show you how to sort of stuff online secondhand for cheap. Bye. <laughs> it's so far away.